Welcome back, MTG Joe here, and uh, season's almost wrapped up for uh, July. I've already qualified, thankfully, last month for the top 1200, so I'm in the top 1400 right now, Mythic, but we'll, uh, we'll see if we can get any higher. Does uh, Final rank doesn't matter. Um, but this list here, it's for Historic. It is a Demir mid-range list, uh, predominantly mono black, similar to my other Obliterator lists um, with the Splash. Uh, I got the original idea with this one. I saw on Twitter there's a couple lists going around. They're playing like Thief of Sanity, so it caught my eye. Uh, Thief's pretty bad in the meta right now, just in general. It gets stomped pretty easily. Um, it gets hit by Mystical Dispute. Sharknadoes are all over the place with the Team Erect decks coming around, so it doesn't really push through damage. Um, so I've kind of been working on this and kind of tweaking it along the way. Um, I originally had Hostage Taker in here, but went with Atris uh, more recently, just... There's a lot more field decks and goblins where uh, Hostage Shaker doesn't really do much um, when you're taking out a token. Um, but the core of the deck is an, a mono black obliterator deck. Uh, you have uh, Gifted Aetherborn, Premier 2 drop, 2-3 uh, lifelink death touch, good against aggro but also good at pressuring uh, your opponent. You have a Phyrexian obliterator which forces your opponent to sack based on damage dealt to it. Uh, and then the rest of the deck is kind of like a controly style deck. Uh, you have removal in the form of Eliminate, Grasp of Darkness, Murderous Rider, uh, a couple Eldest Reborn as well. Uh, so this card was quite powerful during its time in Standard. Uh, forces your opponent to sack a creature or Planeswalker. They discard a card and then you reanimate something in a graveyard. A creature or Planeswalker. Um, this one, it was okay before all the field decks. We'll see if it's something we want to play in here. Um, with all the zombies being easy to kind of sack to that. Uh, you have Ashiok in here, kind of a way to control the board, create tokens, attack in, and take advantage of all the stuff being exiled with Uros. Uh, kind of coming in, some Mind Stones for Ramp, as well as Lake Card Draw, Gaunti, uh, new card in Jumpstart that was reprinted. Uh, basically, enters the battlefield, you get to look at it and take a card from your opponent, and you can cast it as long as it's exiled. Excuse me. Atris works pretty well with Eldest Reborn. And then on the top end, you have a couple Shark Typhoons. Uh, you can hard cast it or just make a token. There's a, a good amount of instants and sorceries in the deck. And then some Masker Worms. Uh, got the sweet art here. Um, basically with this here, with the field tokens or goblins, I've actually 20 to Goblin Player after they went off. Um, just by playing out the Masker Worm. Uh, mana base wise is... Um, pretty simple you got all your duels that produce black including a trinome and then uh, some castles so you have 16 blue sources to cast uh everything you really only have one pip of blue in these cards here um and then this also allows your drown catacombs to come untapped as well as your castle lockwing so really theoretically your only tap lands are these two here sideboard wise could probably be worked on a bit more but as a starting point we have some duress uh, Aether Gust and Negate versus the, the uh, Team Erect matchup. Some Cries versus Aggro, Languish as well. Necromentia, if there's any sort of combo decks uh, that you want to pick off. I also find against uh, Ugin decks. I was playtesting with my friend. Um, he's on Saltai Ugin. Just naming Ugin helps a lot. Um, Ugin kind of wrecks our board, so kind of getting rid of that. And then some Ashiox versus like either uh, Golos Field style strategies or graveyard decks. Um, so we'll try it out. Like I said, I think I'm like 1400. Yeah. We'll play a couple games, see how it goes. The nice thing is I don't have to worry about the, uh, the last few mi uh, minutes of the top 1200 race. Last month was a little uh, stressful. I kept uh, falling under the bubble. It was like 12 hours left, that was like 600, then I fell to like 11.50, so you're doing the play a game, win a game, lose a game type thing. Um, but if you haven't played Historic lately, uh, Teamer Wreck has found its way there. Uh, it's not uh, not as all in Explosion, they do have the Field of the Dead package. So that seems reasonable, especially for against a creature deck. We don't, we have Gifted Aetherborn that can pressure them early. So I think this turn we get Gifted Aetherborn going. 
it holds back the pelt collector and then I can save this removal. So it's Gruul. Phyrexian Obliterator, very good in the Gruul matchup. Um, I'm going to hold this to cycle. I could eliminate one of these. I think just putting a clock on Gruul is good. Okay, so the hard cast Bone Crusher. There. Okay, I'm drawing a few too many lines here now. I think we keep Gonti. Gonti serves as both a blocker and an attacker. Okay, so they can cleave here. even better for us. I think we just clean the board here. Play Ogonti, try to get like a questing beast off them. And then I'll play the watery grave and then we have this to cycle. Um... I actually don't mind the ambush because with death touch it works out pretty nice but I could take the spell breaker hmm. I think we take the spell breaker just having a 4-4 is relevant even if we just want to try to close out the game and then next turn I could play this and cycle They're going to double stomp here. So if I do this, I'm one short. So I think we just play out this, put a counter on it, and then pass the turn. Really just want an obliterator now to kind of close this out. do this yeah I could do everything here we're ahead in this race right now so I'm okay to attack this turn even if they drop questing beast be able to get back like a gifted aetherborn or a gaunti with a counter on it probably get gaunti back flame spill okay interesting that they opted to go with that so let's draw off mindstone here okay, not bad and this is why I like the flexibility of the trinomes and the mind stones uh, early ramp or early fixing it's actually not bad so let's get questing beast Let's just try to close this out. Our life total is quite high. The Gifted Aetherborns also play really well with the castles. And then the Death Touch lets you try to force through damage. Decided to crash.
So opponent attacks here. I'm going to go, I think, Gonti again. Or you know what? Let's just close out this game. Could have done this before, but I think just having the pressure out is good. This basically is 8 damage, and then if their creature blocks, they die from the Masker Worm trigger. Uh, so against Gruul, Aether Gusts are good. We'll bring in the Languish, and I think the Cries are reasonable as well. Uh, coming out, the Agonizing Remorse. Uh, five cuts. Uh, probably Eldest Reborn and Atris. Maybe a Mind Stone and then the two Atris. Run it like that. Languish is really big in this matchup, being able to clip uh, Questing Beasts. I think we keep this, still have the top end. Maybe we go down one Shark Typhoon and play one Atris. Run it like that. Atris gets hit with Cryocarnarium, so that's one thing to consider. That sounds good. Really just looking for lands, but I could probably try to tempo them. We're a ways away from a Masker Worm. So I may want to take them off this Elf. If they have double Elf, Cry would be great here. Gonna Aether Gust them, try to tempo them for a couple turns. Try to find a board wipe. Okay, Worm's actually not terrible here. This allows us to Aether Gust them once again. Play out the questing beast. Just kill this. They do get two triggers on the Pelt Collector, but I can Ashiok next turn. Make a token. Could also eliminate. I think we do that. this now before they go to combat so they don't get the if they want to ember cleave they got to put it on an elf so i gain life this one's over should be good masker worm clears this out and then murderous rider starts gaining us life back i have ashiok and uh grasp and that was without an obliterator as well if we start getting if we had an obliterator down then they can't really do much the only way really gruel can get around obliterator is um questing beast with an ember cleave because they only have to assign one damage with the uh, death touch oh i guess i got that because i cast their stuff with um gaunty all right not bad want to know play a couple games see how it fares out you're not seeing as much gruel with the um, reduction of Burning Tree Emissary, and then just goblins being able to go wider faster. Yorion. Yorion's usually like a field deck, so this hand's pretty slow. Okay, we keep this. Um. I think we do this. Generally, Orion's either Esper Control 
like with the bounce package or they're like a field style deck um i think going gaunty on turn three is reasonable here it's most likely a field deck yeah so masker worm is actually very good in this matchup we can take Having access to rituals not bad once they pop off on field, but I think we actually take the explore. It just lets us cycle through our cards faster. If they go Uro here, then I could also Agonizing Remorse it. Drawing a lot of lands is actually not terrible with Explore. So let's play the Temple first. We don't want more lands. Masker Worm's great. So I do think I hold the Masker Worm as a way to kind of get them once they get going um, with like field clear out a few things and just kind of get a whole bunch of damage off on them mind you with this being the board state right now it's not unreasonable to do that plays out a whole bunch of damage and then lets me try to close this game out faster Plus, just with double growth spiral in hand, they're not doing too much. Aetherborn comes down next turn. These being two threes are also relevant against the zombies. They can attack in. Okay, so they have Ugin. I don't know why we can see that, but they have Ugin. So we might want to hold back threats, but I think once Ugin comes down, we're kind of stuck. Yeah, they just go Yorion for the turn. Um, they didn't growth spiral. It's interesting. Cool, we'll take that. I guess this doesn't tap for what they wanted. Um, so this matchup, obviously, Ashiok's good. Uh, I usually will bring in the negates and the necromantia. Uh, do I want the cries? So Atris is pretty bad. Agonizing Remorse is fine because you can also clip Uros. The Eliminates could come out. Grasps, we could trim a couple. I like this flying. Eldest Reborn's not that good in this matchup. So I guess we bring in the cries. Probably just run it like that. So probably Necromentia, I'm actually going to name Ugin over the Field of the Deads. I can beat Field, I can't beat um, Ugin. I'm going to keep the Remorse, it gives me a play on 2, and then I can Dream Render on 3, and then Necromentia on 4. Double Moldaya. So I'm gonna still take the Ugin. Mind you, I probably could have played them taking the Moldaya. Just try to hit pieces like that. I think if I hit a land, I'm going to go Obliterator this turn. So 
So I want to see what they have on top of their library first. So we hit a field, we hit an Ulamog. So I actually think this turn I'm going to go Field of Ruin, or um, Field of the Dead. Okay, so they have Languish, Yorian. They have Crater Hoof. They have another Ulamog. They have another Ugin. The two Ugins, two Vivians. So I could drop Obliterator next turn. I can drop Yorian, so it'll be interesting to see if they do that. So they have Cultivate, they have Golo, so that's still probably enough to keep Ashiox in against them. Take the Uro off the top. It's actually interesting. They don't have a graveyard right now, so maybe we just go Obliterator. Because if they rip Golos, then I don't want him to be able to search. I think we just go Obliterator here. They want to attack in, then they have to trade off the sack. Need some lines. I think I want the languish in here as well. Yeah, with Golos on top. Interesting they brought Languish in against us. These girls are actually pretty good because they help fix for Golos. Let's see if they shuffle here. Come on, fetch. Um, so the problem is... Okay, so I'm going to kill a Golos. Don't want that around. This with these is kind of scary. I'm just going to pop this off now. We hit Crater Hoof. I missed too many lines this game. That I'm probably dead. Could fetch to shuffle to try to get more lions.
Give me a land. See if they draw here. Okay, with an arrow on top, I'm gonna play the Ashiok. Ideally, I'd like to draw a land for the Gifted Aetherborn. Okay, so I could hit Yorian. Like three cards. Not drawing lands this game certainly has hurt. Um, honestly, let's just distract him. They might also not have much to fetch, so they can Yorian into this. You know they have an Ugin left and they have an Ulamog. I'm just trying to get their life total low enough that if I drop Masker Worm, it could potentially do something. Wild animals I like. People balance comes. Okay, now we're we're dead. They play this next turn. I can't really do much. They exile a couple of my lands. And then I don't really have a way to deal with the indestructible. Yeah, too little, too late. Because Ulamog comes down, hits my obliterator. Yeah, it's a lot harder. You can't necessarily just target um, the field. I did it based off what they had on top. So I think I want the Languish in as well. Um, these Grasps are pretty bad. I think if we have Languish, we're okay. I don't think, actually. They have Crater Hoof. They have Vivian. I don't think we want the Aether Gust, though. Still doesn't do enough. This helps me get up in curve. I think we maybe go down an obliterator. Go for a little bit more card advantage. Ugin decks are going to be tough. Okay, this hand's reasonable. Early clock. Into Masker Worm on the top end. Cry Carnarium can help clean up. This also insulates our life total. Gonna push away lands, looking for like an Ashiok or just something with a, a faster clock to it. So if they growth spiral into like Oracle and Moldaya, I'm gonna cry a Carnarium. Just to get it off the battlefield. Okay, if they go Golos, then it's a little bad. They can do that next turn. Um, probably just this. Golos, get fields. Play field. Yeah, probably got this game. Nice. At least they hit Mythic. Yeah, it's been a little busy even on my end. I haven't been producing as much as I'd like to. Um, I 
think what we do, we attack in, they fetch here. I guess that's worse. They double block with the zombie. So I think what we actually do here Let's cycle this, see what we get. The gate's actually good. So if they try to cast Ugin, I can negate it, but I want them to play a bunch of lands. Ideally another field. I'm surprised they did that and they didn't activate Golos. Because now they can't play the field off Golos which they hit anyways. So what we're gonna try to do this game is just like punk them out with um, Master Worm. So they might be dead if they uh, hit another field. So that's 12 damage that they take right now. So I think what we do... So I can cry this turn. I want them to commit more to the boar. So it's 12, Masker Worm. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I can cry this turn with holding up negate. I only take 3 damage. If they have Crater Hoof, then I'm dead. If they hit it off Golos. So I think we cry. Let them activate Golos, create a bunch more tokens. We need eight things on the board. Okay, so Golos gets another field here. It's fine. Their sequencing seems very odd to me. They should have done that before, like play Golos before. 14, play a land, oh but they gained the life. Alright, so opponent's actually dead, Arena decided to crash again. They made 10 zombies. Hey, Carmadillo. How's it going? So they killed it in response, so I don't get the trigger. I get the wipe, but I don't get the other half. A little annoying. Okay, so we'll cast Ugin here, I'll negate it. And then we're just trying to find another Masker Worm. Which would be lethal. Unfortunately, because arena reset, I don't get to see my percentages of drawing it. Why 
languishes a draw. Yeah, it's kind of annoying that they hit that. So I'm gonna set it up. Don't want remorse. We're getting pretty low on life. I have to take three here. Well, die is fine. Like, if anything, I want them to commit more to the board. But at this point, they're... Their life total is high enough that if I was them, I wouldn't play into it. Seems kind of loose on their part. I just escape a row. Insulate your life total more, and that puts me at lethal. We saw what we could do. We just have to hit that Masker Worm there if they didn't have the Assassin's Trophy in response, or if I had one more land for the negate, I would have been able to negate the thing. So they could take 20 damage here, but it's not enough. Shark Tycoon is not there. Ah, they'll name Masker Worm here if they're smart. Yeah, they had it. You gotta give props to the opponent. They played around it properly. So name Masker Worm and then I'll concede. Yep. We played Terra Outs there, like we had him dead. That game two, we just missed lines too many times. Let me give Arena a quick reset because it's crashed twice already and it's quite annoying. We'll, uh, we'll run one more, see how it goes. I think I might want another Necromentia or at least another Masker Worm if more of these field decks are coming out. Maybe instead of Atrus. How many wild cards I got? 10? Um. Yeah, maybe we could try to run a field. The thing is, like with Obliterator, maybe play one field of Ruin. Try that out. I think ultimately though, we kind of want them to pop off with it and then just try to sneak in the Masker Worm. But against like Gruul, we'll probably have a good matchup against like Vampires. Goblins is pretty reasonable. Two, three, four. Creature based deck, creature based deck, say hello to your obliterator. Yes, yes, please. So if they attack in with the Hallow Blade, I'm gonna block here to get another card out of their hand. Actually, let's take the trade here. Seems reasonable. I'm gonna murderous rider the inspiring veteran. Nope, we're gonna murderous rider the Benelish Marshal. 
Are you a knight? No. Yeah, hold your horses. We take two from this, but that's basically the damage we would have taken from the attack. Cleave is something potentially we need to consider. But next turn I could go Murderous into Grasp or Eldest Reborn depending on their board state. This looks like Red White Knights of some sort. So let's go this. Play you out. So Grasp's probably going to take out the Inspiring Veteran so these get smaller. So that way next turn when I Masker Worm, it can take them out. And then this is negative, so it also gets around the indestructible clause here. Super dead. Worm go brrrr. We play an EDH now. Alright, uh, weenies, we want the languishes and that. I think that's probably it. I don't think they, they're they playing enough to really justify Aether Gust. And then we probably just want to take out the Agonizing Remorse. Shark Typhoon's probably okay. Atrus plays to the board at least. I think the Eldest Reborn are actually pretty bad in this matchup. They go pretty wide and they're probably playing a token sub theme. So I think we're reasonable to cut those. Like at the very least, Shark Typhoon for three mana creates a blocker. And we can use that. I think against like all these creature style decks, we run a pretty good matchup. Field is hit or miss. Like if the games they hit Ugin, they hit Ugin. And then we're probably main board. We're really bad against Sultai, I found, uh, in testing. Um, we don't play to the board till four. Opponents on the play. We have Languish. Let's try. Ah, a five drop. Just what I wanted. this turn are you kidding me ha ah, da 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 probably dead we need a removal yeah we're dead well that was loose um let's run it back That game just, we have six two mana removal spells. We have field or uh, some ramp. We have some early creatures. Like it was a hand that could come together, especially just going languish into double obliterator. Clear their board, play obliterator, GG. But probably shouldn't have kept that on the play. Because cry is probably not that good in this matchup. If they get their lords going. Okay, this sounds good. Um, I 
think we want the lands. And I actually think um, we hold up Grasp of Darkness. Yeah, especially with Drawing Languish. Oh, uh, Drawing Languish, since we're losing thing anyways. Maybe we do do the Mind Stone. Just take the two life this turn. Because we're going to lose it anyways to Languish. So I'm going to do this, so that way they discard a card as well. So it gets them off some more card advantage. And then next turn I can follow it up with a Masker Worm. Yeah, I think the game's, if we can go Aetherborn into like a Sweeper, we're in a pretty good spot. This one's probably done. Oh, they got Devout Decree. Still in it. But I have Gifted Aetherborn. Wouldn't mind a castle. Yeah, we got Eliminate as well. Probably gonna cycle this. This removal doesn't worry me too much. Or like these creatures we're gaining to. I'd rather get it like a lord off the table. Gifted Aetherborn's such a great design for a card. It's just super flexible. Sick. Okay, so two and one with the deck, and we were basically an Assassin's Trophy away from being three and zero. Oh. Um, didn't get to run into either Goblins or Teamer Wreck, but overall, Fethel deck was pretty solid. What did we hit? We got a fourth worm. Verdict says Peer into the Abyss. So I think I do like this configuration. And it's probably what I would run with. I may even consider just going up another field of ruin instead of the Atris. But Atris plays to the board. I think just with us having a lot of higher end stuff, it could be reasonable to play the fourth Mindstone, but Probably run it like this. The Field of Ruin is okay, considering we really every other land taps for that. And we are playing, I think, 26 lines. So we're okay there. Um, sideboard seemed more than reasonable for the matchups. Um, they did the jobs. Necromentia was fine. Uh, my Orzhov version, I haven't touched it as much. So last month, this got me to top 1200 um, on Mythic. Uh, so I kind of made some changes. I was trying out Vuna or Vona. Uh, it was okay, but like I was kind of more grindy control uh, based, uh, so it was more built to beat Gruul. Um, it's got a terrible matchup against uh, control in game one because you have a lot of dead cards you can't cycle. So basically, the Orzhov version is much better against creature based decks. It was terrible against uh, Nexus, so I stopped playing it. Um, what I'd probably change now is I'd go down, I'd probably switch it like this. Play it like that, and I probably also wouldn't play the Chupacabras. And I would play, um, Maze Mind, I take out, 
Actually, no, we can run the full four. Uh, where are you? Gifted Aetherborn I'd play. This card was very good. So I kind of run it something like this. Would probably be where I'd be at. And then, so the Rakdos version is better against control. A little bit weaker against creatures. Um, but similar idea, because you have Kroxa, and the big thing in the sideboard is you get Rampaging Ferocidon, Robber to kind of attack the... It's better, like, uh, post... Um board version against the slower decks um you can get rid of stuff like bone crusher stuff like that you still have your aether borns uh again i would probably hedge and just put um masker worm in a lot of these decks now just there's a lot of these small creatures it's flexible against these like team or rec control style decks and the field decks is just kind of a i win version um i have some videos if you want to see like the older versions they're all up on youtube um and playing like against Nexus, stuff like that. I finished like 700 uh, last month in the 700s with a combination of these two. Um, so they were good. Um, I'm just trying to test out like some of the other ones. This month I kind of just ranked up heavily with Goblins, something like uh, 14 and two or 14 and three with a deck, just to kind of jump up into there. Um, but I'm gonna wrap this one up. Appreciate everyone stopping by. Uh, if you do have any suggestions for decks you'd like to see for the next video, do let me know. Otherwise, we'll just cycle, kind of cycle through some of the cool and interesting decks we see from Historic Ladders. And we will continue as much as possible to be a team or rec-free zone. I appreciate everyone stopping by. Stay safe out there.